piece I remember most about the 1985 final wasn't so much missing it. It was Dennis Taylor putting his cue over the top of his head and wagging his finger after he'd won it. You know, and I thought, you know, you know, why rub it in like that? And I still to this day want to know what that was all about. Do you want me to tell you what it was all about? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. When that black went in, I spent 13 years trying to become world champion. And I think it was just such a relief when the black went in. I just stamped my cue. I, did, I, I had no idea what I was going to do. And uh, it's things that people still remember. And Steve does a good impersonation of it uh, now and again. I also, I also remember about five days, six days after that losing in the World Championship final and, I, and my office being phoned up regularly saying, I think Steve was struggling to see the scoreboard. I think he perhaps needs glasses like Dennis. <laughs> then I was, I was in a petrol station on the way back up to Sheffield to do an exhibition. And at the time, if you filled up your tank with petrol, they used to give you free presents in the petrol stations. I filled up my tank of petrol, I filled up my car with a tank of petrol, and as I was walking out the door, I'd forgotten the free present. And the woman behind the counter said, do you want the glasses? Which was the bride. And I, well, I felt like punching her. She should have said tumblers, really. Yeah, tumblers, tumblers, it was, yes. yes. I was just going to say, my, what would my memory most be? I think the green that, that Steve missed down the cushion. I remember that, because if he had knocked that green up, or knocked it in even, and he took a little bit of a risk, and that shot sticks out of my memory. Shot that a lot of people would have forgotten was the big turning point in that final. My, my most, my most favourite snooker player is myself, uh, and I remember most about me because I do remember most about because I remember when I was younger, a lot more than I remember about the other players when they were younger. I can go back quite a long way uh, with me. Um, I can't go as far back with Dennis. Can you remember the first time you? played yourself and who won that one? Uh, yes, as a, as a young 14-year-old, um, well, I, well I, no, actually, as a young 14-year-old, I played my, I, I was me, but then I played Ray Reardon. I was the other Ray Reardon. So I played against Ray Reardon, but I played Ray shots. But really, you beat yourself. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, and, um, my favourite player over the years? So hard to judge. There's been so many great ones, but I think you probably all have to say Ronnie O'Sullivan, yeah. how easy he makes the game look. Well, I mean, mine's changed over the years because I've seen them all. I never thought anybody would be better than the great Steve Davis. I thought he'd remain the greatest player of all time. Then Stephen Hendry came along with a slightly different game, long potter, and then I thought that he'd overtaken Steve. And I thought Stephen Hendry would remain the greatest player of all time. And of course, Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan came on the scene. And I'm with Steve. Uh, I would have to say that Ronnie is the, the greatest, most naturally gifted snooker player and I think sportsman that uh, the UK has ever had. I'd have to say that one of my the memories uh, uh, for me, and it's a strange thing because actually uh, I was quite lucky to make the first, and I'm not boasting here, but I was quite lucky to make the first ever 147 break, the first ever maximum break on television, which meant potting all the balls ending up potting the black. Uh, and I used to be a big fan of Wimbledon, of Bjorn Borg, I thought he was the coolest character. And Bjorn Borg, before a big shot, before a big serve, would always blow his hand like that. Blow, to just, get the, just to get the moisture out of his hand, just blow his hand. And before the black I potted to, to make a 147 break, I didn't even think about it, but before it, I blew my hand as if I was Bjorn Borg. How strange is that? Uh, my, there's two great sporting moments that I will never forget. Uh, one was my uh, good friend, and he was my best man when I, when I got married again 13 years ago. Ian Woosnam knocking the final putt in to win the Masters. I mean, that was just quite incredible. And the other one, not many weeks, about seven weeks after I lifted the world title, Barry McGuigan beat Pedroza at Queen's Park Rangers football ground. And that was an unbelievable night. I was uh, in Barry's dressing room before and after, and that was very special. So two great sporting memories uh, that stick out for me.